So let's start with a drum pattern here. Traditional boom bap style. I'm going for like a DJ Premier style. Maybe it's going to be boom trap. Maybe it's going to be just boom bap. Uh, but definitely the sampling style influence from a DJ Premier is what I'm going to go for in this beat. So usually I'll start with one bar and then I'll just extend it and then make variations maybe in each bar of like a four bar loop. And I've been playing my drums a lot, you know, finger drumming, not that I'm really good at it, but uh, because it allows me to get variations like here, it didn't fall on the grid. What I would normally do if I just kind of drew my MIDI notes in, I would you know, quantize it and then go to like the smallest grid value or even, you know, turn the grid quantize off and then I'll just move it like that. But knowing that it was played like this and landed here just feels more authentic to me. So um, I might make variations to whatever I laid down, you know, depending on how good it sounds. And right now it seems like it's pretty good. We're going to lower that swing kick a little bit. And I might even move that one over and maybe even this snare here can come over a little bit and we'll lower this one here just kind of messing around trying to get the best groove possible I like the drums to have like that hesitant sound where they're not so perfectly quantized and then perfectly swung. I, I just like that human feel to it. So see how that hi-hat here landed before the kick? That's a big no-no for me. So I might just go in and re-record that one note. That was terrible. What I like to do with the hi-hats also is I will swing them a certain way and I do this one-fourth amount, I don't know, 30, and it kind of creates this like kind of a rhythm. Okay, so let's get these hi-hats to play a little bit different in velocity. I even want it to play a little bit lower in volume, so we'll go to here and just lower the output by two. Maybe more. Maybe add some snare ghost notes in here. So right now I'm adjusting the velocity to make sure that it's hitting lower than the other snares so that it's more so felt but not heard like the other snares. Maybe even swing the kick a little bit more. Even the slightest movement of the kick off the grid can make a world of a difference for the groove. All right, so at this point, I think we got a good groove going for our drums. These are the samples that I was going to work with. These are four random samples, and in the style of that kind of DJ Premier sampling, um, that usually happens. Like, you're either going to choose different cuts from one sample, and a lot of times it's like different parts of the song that may sound very different, or... You're just going to use two or three or four different samples and chop them in, pitch them to be accurate with the initial anchor sample um, and make it work that way. So what I think is going to be what I would call the anchor sample, that main foundational element is going to be this one right here, because for me, it's the kind of style 
that I was inspired to. Um, when I listened to it, I'm like, yeah, I want to make a beat with this sample. And then everything else is going to try to kind of fit and work with this particular sound and whatever I choose to pitch to be. The reason I chose this one is because I heard the ability for me to chop those brass notes. And I said, that might sound good. It might not, but we're going to see here. Um, what I do in the machine is I will first create a pattern and the samples are going to usually be about four bars long. So we'll just set that up that way. And I do shift browser and I will input the audio module, which will time stretch the audio. So now we're not dealing with MIDI. Um, it'll time stretch the audio to the BPM of the beat. And now I could mess with the pitch and it's not going to affect the tempo of the sample, the BPM of the sample. It's gonna always work with the BPM of the session here. So what I like to do now is find the pitch that this sample might sound better in. So if I choose a lower enough a, a, a lower enough pitch, I could also duplicate the sample and play it an octave above for like the chorus or maybe you know every other four bars to add more energy. But if I choose if I don't pitch it down and then I do the octave above thing to add more energy, then you just get a really high pitched chipmunky sounding sample. So if I pitch it down enough, then that octave up actually sounds pretty cool and adds a good amount of energy which if it works here, I'll show you. And you'll be like, wow, that's a that's a great way to add, like instead of adding another melody or other instrumentation for like the chorus section, you just pitch it up an octave and now that's your chorus section. Pretty simple, but a very effective method I use a lot. So we're gonna work with that. What I do next is I'll render out the audio here so that it actually um, is with the BPM that we stretched it to. And then I'll start making my chops based on that with this pitch. And if I don't like the pitch, I can always still raise it up as long as it's with the audio module in machine. That's where the time stretching and everything is going to happen. So but now so I can make those chops, I'm going to go back and hit shift browser and I'm going to change it back to the sampler module, which is now going to be the MIDI data. And I can make those chops accordingly, but they're always going to be in time because it's that newer time stretched version that I'm chopping up. So also um, what I like to do is make sure that the release of the hit is fairly short so there's no tail. So somewhere around there. I can also set it up to where um, in pad mode I can have these pads assigned to a choke group, which is basically if another pad hits, if it's in the same choke group, then it's going to cut off the previous pad. I don't always need that because I can just draw that stuff in, but it is a good way to kind of get that chopped sample sound. Um, but this is another way that I do without having to have all the pads work in a choke group. Also, the auto slicing feature is cool. I like it, but it's too much work, at least in a machine, to you know have it auto slice, and then I gotta pick and choose the samples on the pads that I like, and then reassign them. For me, sometimes if the sample is short enough, I can just kind of dial in and manually cut the samples the way that I want. Um, but whatever method works good for you, I guess. So even that little note right there might be a really cool thing, a really cool addition to the beat. Even like distorting that might be really good. Brass sounds really good when you just add some kind of distortion to it, um, like a guitar distortion, something big and gritty, because it just makes it sound like a really gritty synth. So it depends on 
the beat and the vibe you're going for, but for adding like a lot of power and energy, yeah, like some kind of distortion unit really works well with these kind of brass stabs. So allow me to take this time here to let you know that if you rap and you need beats every single Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I release a brand new batch of beats and I sell the exclusive rights for a wildly low price at $50 a beat. That's too insane to not at least go to DaxHammer.com and check it out. So do yourself a favor. If you want exclusive rights for your beats, not leases, then go to DaxHammer.com and take advantage. So now what I'll do is I will try to just hit the pads, come up with a melody, find out what's what and where it is and try to play something that's different and then I'll record that in. I don't want to just go along with the original melody. Now remember, I got three other samples that I want to try to include in this melody here, so I don't want to overproduce based on this sample, but I guess the more potential it has to add more is good, so I'm just kind of feeling that out right now and really seeing what we got. Also, it's good not to talk in this process because then I just forget where everything was that I just figured out. <laughs> All right, let's chop up some other samples here and see if we can get more inspiration. Another thing, though, to note is that I will try to get something played so that I can match the key. So let's do that first. We'll just do that for now. So now we will work with the pitch of this sample. This might be a little high in pitch though, so let's bring it back down to minus three. So that's just a whole octave lower. And now that we have this kind of in key, um, let's actually render this out so we can start making our chops and all of that good stuff. So at this point, I'm really confused and not even sure if the sample is going to work, but let's see. So I think what I want to do is do something like this. This is a little too short. That's it. Let's move on, see if we can get some other good stuff out of the next sample and try to see if we can get it to be in pitch. One thing that would help is just using like mixed in key, maybe. 
um, and then having that detect the sample key. So the original sample right now is playing in. So the original sample was in C minor. And this one here is in D sharp minor. Now, what did we do to this sample here? We pitched it down five semitones. So pitched down five semitones, we got ourselves in G. So in order to get G here uh, from D sharp minor, we gotta go up four semitones. And that should be what locks them in, but let's give it a listen and see. Eh. Well, maybe that won't be the best way because maybe I want the first note. So let's render that. Let's chop it up. And it doesn't sound that good. So let's find out what this sample here can offer us. So we're in B minor here, and we need to get down or up to G. Let's see. So this is when I came to the conclusion that this particular sample is not adding any value to the song. What if we do this? And then we put kickstart on. Let's try to find something else random here. That sounds cool. So it'll be E minor. So it should be three up. This is gonna help the beat a lot. Let's chop out what we like. So I knew at this point that the beat was almost gonna be done just simply by having this like last supporting melody. So the way that the structure in my mind goes is we have this really solid lead kind of foundation melody with the brass stabs. That happens twice in the four bar scheme. So it happens on the first four counts. And then after that, we have that other kind of chopped melody we did and put the kickstart on it. And then it goes back to the brass stabs to then conclude with what I'm doing right now. And I kind of wonder how that would sound if we had that pitch down an octave. It may not sound good, but let's see. Yeah, that sounds pretty fire. And I wonder if we change the drum pattern up a little bit, maybe add a fill, but I gotta find the right one. But let's start with maybe just doing something like this. But of course, in the spirit of humanizing the drums more, let's play that in.
<laughs> no, we still have to fix it. Now, if we take this brass sample, render it out. Oh man, I got all these pads filled up. What don't I like the most? So we'll take up that slot and we're gonna convert it into the audio module here and we're gonna raise that up an octave, lower that in volume and see if this sounds fire for something like the chorus. No, sounds terrible. Ditch the idea. It's not gonna work for this. Now, the next thing, I'll put it here in my drum group, is we're gonna find a little grunt, shout, something to add some energy. And honestly, like, you know, I'm not picky about using the similar one for multiple beats, whatever. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Shout out to Decap. So let's choose an 808 for the bass line. Get rid of that little initial transient. Okay. Let's play it out. One of the absolute best ways to ensure that your 808s are always hitting on the right note according to the scale or however it is that the sample is playing, whatever bass note it's playing and you gotta match that, is just pitch up the 808s a couple octaves and try to get the right note there because your ear can perceive the pitch so much better in that registry than all the way in that sub range. Might want to add a little bit of um, legato glide. So you hear how the note just kind of like swells down or I'd have maybe the notes swell up. It just creates some movement with the bass. I can even have something like this. So this is what kind of starts adding, you know, some trap element to the boom bap. And I think when you add like a trap style bass line where there's some elements that are often used in trap or in drill, you kind of start to fuse the genres together and it sounds really good. You know, even like trap hats and the way that they distort over kick drums also sounds really good. But I started here, I'm gonna stay here and keep it as authentic boom bap as possible, but I wanna add a little bit of fusion here with the bass line. See now, is that note off? So that note I just fixed is actually replayed from the first bar and I didn't change it here, but I ended up changing it, realizing that it might've worked. It just sounded better here, right here. See, like, it's, it's crazy because every element here in this beat 
doesn't even really go together. You know, you have this kind of hard hitting brass sample and then it gets like really light with whatever flutes and stuff like that. And then it goes back to the brass and then you got like some really dark grimy sounding key thing going on. It's, it's really weird, but the whole vibe it creates is just different. And I like it. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Let me know. I think I'm pretty much done. I would have to sequence it out and see if it needs anything anywhere else, but I'd get kind of down to the mixing stage. And when I'm making beats, you know, I try to make as many beats as I can per week, and then I'll post them up for sale. You know, I'll post them at a lower price, so it kind of creates like a scarcity marketing thing where it's like first come, first serve, get your beats ASAP for this price point. If not, they're going to go up. And I can't focus so much on the quality of the mixes because I think most of the people that are buying from me are through my broadcast channel. So I'm communicating with them there pretty frequently. So they kind of know that this is going to be like, you're in the studio with me vibing out. We got this beat going. I'm not trying to worry about how to get the perfect 60 hertz in my kick drum while you're there trying to write to the beat. Um, you know, so it's that like you're going to get a beat that's fairly balanced, but not fully mixed so that's kind of my approach here for this season as i do you know this method of selling beats so i'll just slap on soft clipper you know a little bit of extra processing on the master and a limiter make sure that it plays loud enough and it hits and call it a day if i want to showcase my mixing skills it's not going to be through this particular method because that is going to be a whole nother project in and of itself. I would have to export all of the sounds and mix it in whatever DAW that I'm going to be using. And I've tried to, you know, utilize a DAW like Logic to produce and mix, but I find myself still spending too much time mixing while I'm producing to get all the drums to hit the way that I want. So it really is still a two-step process for me always. And I just feel like at this point now, I'm like, these beats always sell by the end of the week anyway. So just take the basic mix. <laughs> so if you guys like this video, make sure that you hit that like button. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, please subscribe as I'm releasing beat videos like this weekly and other tips and tutorials as well. And let me know in the comments below if there's any style of beat that you'd like for me to try to make um or if you have any questions about my process here as well so until next time may god bless you peace